Hi, I'm Shibby120, and these are the best games coming to Nintendo Switch this April, including one kind of like Animal Crossing that just might be cursed. I don't know, I'm gonna need your opinion on this one. So give the video a thumbs up if you're stoked for new Switch games, and let's go. Now, there's a big game coming this month, but first, I want to talk to you about one you may not have heard about called Stick Fight. It's chaotic, it's goofy, and it's a physics-based multiplayer fighting game where the last one alive wins. You can go head-to-head -head with up to four players with local multiplayer on the couch or online, and it's really just a fun party game. You can fight melee or use various weapons to take down your opponents, but what's really chaotic is the very interactive levels that will put you all in danger and really cause you to improvise and work together to survive. Really, the environments are what makes it so fun since they can be so random and dangerous. Available weapons consist of a snake gun, rocket launcher, lightsaber, shotgun, and just all kinds of random stuff. You have to be careful though because these weapons can end up turning against you. Your own snakes can hurt you, for example, and the recoil from a shotgun just might throw you off the stage. Check out Stick Fight for some out of control fun with your friends. Another good one this month is Star Wars Republic Commando coming over from the original Xbox. This honestly gives it that GameCube PC 2005 nostalgia that I welcome on the Switch. This first person shooter follows the Delta Squad of clone commandos around the same time of the events of Episode 2 and Episode 3. It's all about commanding your squad and taking down hordes of enemies in a single player campaign. Your allies consist of a demolitions expert, a hacker and tech expert, and a dude that basically just runs around attacking everyone. The command system is pretty smart and you don't really have to babysit your squad. They're pretty decent at thinking on their own, but you can make them do things like breaching a room, hacking a terminal, controlling a turret, or sniping down enemies. It's a gritty apocalyptic Star Wars setting that doesn't add much to the lore, and you may not even see a single lightsaber in your playthrough. This though just helps the game stand on its own, I think, and appeal to a little bit wider audience. And if you're liking this video so far, hit that subscribe button for more Nintendo Switch videos, and remember to tap that bell icon so you don't miss any notifications. Now Animal Crossing fans, I have a couple games on here for you. One that kind of scares me that we'll talk about later, but this first one is called Cozy Grove, and it actually has a cool watercolor art style to it that I think is really cute and relaxing. You play as a spirit scout that's trapped on a strange island filled with spirits, and this game, like Animal Crossing, is based on real time. Each day, the spirits will have a little quest for you, mostly fetch quests, but they can result in getting you new tools and special items and will also expand your island. Then as your island grows, you get more quests and they get a little bit more involved. When you're not questing, you'll be fishing, cooking, digging, and mining resources and decorating your campsite with various furniture and other items and petting animals. Time traveling could mess up your save file on this one, so I wouldn't suggest that, but it's nice anyway being able to check every day to see what's new and progress through this roughly 40 hour storyline. Another great game coming this April is The Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel 4. Following two weeks after the last game that came to Switch about a year ago, this RPG wraps up the Trails of Cold Steel saga that began back in 2013. This game adds new characters to the roster while keeping the old, so there's a lot of playable characters here, in fact, the most in any game in this sub-series. The battle system remains mostly the same, but with a couple slight changes, making things a little more challenging this time. Combat is very animated and flashy in these games, and it's all about working as a team to break down the enemy's barrier and unleash your rush attacks or bursts. When you're not in combat, you'll be progressing through the main story while fulfilling requests and taking on side missions. You can also distract yourself by playing mini games on the side such as fishing and various puzzle games. JRPG fans, you're gonna wanna take a look at this one and keep watching because this isn't the only one on this list. And friends, as a thank you for making it this far in the video, I'm going to give away two $10 eShop gift cards. All you gotta do is drop a comment below telling me two games on this list that you're most interested in. Yes, two games because I'm pretty sure there's one I'm gonna talk about here in a bit that everybody's going to pick. Two winners will receive a comment reply two weeks after this video is uploaded. Good luck! Next up, we have Saga Frontier Remastered, which is also a great game for Switch this month. JRPG fans, you're going to love this one because if you haven't played it, this is going to be like busting out Final Fantasy VII for the first time again. And if you have played it, well, then you'll be happy to know they've added content in this game that was cut from back in the day. This includes new events and cutscenes and a storyline for Fuse. 
Originally by Square on the PlayStation back in 97, this turn-based RPG still feels relevant due to traditional mechanics that have stood the test of time in gaming. The layout feels familiar, following now eight very different characters, each with their own short stories that also cross paths from time to time. One cool aspect of the game is that your character will get better and more skilled at a weapon the more they use it. And you can really use whatever weapon you want no matter who you're playing with, so you can really develop each character to your liking. It's not a short game, and it's not particularly easy either. For a classic JRPG with stories that really pull you in, check out Saga Frontier Remastered. Now before we get into these last two games, I told you there was one on this list that just might be cursed. I mean, look at it. Something about this just scares me, but I will say, people who have played it on other platforms are saying it's actually an addicting game. Like the series it takes inspiration from, you'll spend your time planting trees, harvesting fruit, catching bugs, fishing, and donating to the museum, but you can also farm and grow crops too. And of course, you'll be doing favors for the local villagers as well. So look, it's nothing we haven't seen before, but it is a third of the price of Animal Crossing. And there's actually a leveling system here that allows you to unlock new items as you progress. From what I hear though, this game does get a little repetitive, there's no day or night cycle, it's just always daytime, and I believe the same bugs and fish are available all the time, no matter what. What do you think? Does this look okay? Have you played it before? I think if you can get past these horrifying visuals, there's probably some good fun to be had here. And before we jump into the final games, make sure to join my Discord with the link below if you want to talk about Switch games and make new friends. We're always talking about Animal Crossing and stuff, and we'd love to have you in the chat. Another new game to look out for this April is R-Type Final 2. This is a classic series that goes all the way back to the arcades in the late 80s, and since then has seen games on multiple systems, including the Super Nintendo, Game Boy, PS1 and 2, and more throughout the years. This entry keeps the core side-scrolling spaceship shoot-'em-up action and adds bright, colorful 3D visuals to the party. To start out, you'll choose the ship you want to play with, and then you can customize it. Customization options include changing the colors and adding decals, but you can also modify your weapons loadout to really choose your playstyle. Then, as you progress through the game, you'll upgrade your ship and get new weapons. The game is said to have at least 12 ships available, including 7 from the previous games. I really like how bright and flashy this game is, with really clean visuals. It's going to be high action, and if it's anything like the last game in the series, R-Type Final 2 is going to be a really solid arcade shoot 'em up experience. And finally, the biggest game on this list is New Pokemon Snap. This is a sequel or reboot of the original game that came out for the Nintendo 64. Now, back then, this idea was kind of random and seemed boring to me but it was kind of ahead of its time if you really think about it. Pokemon Snap was made for 2021. Essentially, you roll around the lentil region in this pod vehicle like they have in Jurassic World, and you take pictures of Pokemon. That's it. You'll find these Pokemon in their natural habitats, doing things you don't always see them doing. You can give them food and snap the picture at just the right time, catch them during adorable moments. You can also do other things to try and get a better picture, like play a song for them to make them happy, or throw out an Illumina orb to make them glow. Then you can edit the photos and post them on their server online if you want. This game just really looks relaxing and wholesome, and it might be one Pokemon game I can actually get into. Drop a comment below and let us know if you'll be picking any of these up, or if there's anything else we should be looking out for for the month of April, because yeah, I'm always looking for new games. Other than that, yeah, consider subscribing for more Switch games and unboxings coming up, and tap one of the boxes on your screen right now, and I'll see you over there in another video. Oh my goodness, I am full of spaghetti and cookies, and I'm ready to go to sleep.